Hey guys, this is Yusuf with that'sitguys.com and today I'm going to show you how to stream to YouTube or Twitch using open broadcast software or OBS Studio. And I'm just going to go right to it. So first thing you should do is download OBS Studio. Now the last video I made, I showed you how to do it with the GeForce Experience application using your NVIDIA graphics card, which is probably a really easier way than this. But for those of you who want to use OBS, just Google search download OBS and then click on the first search result. So here's the download page for open broadcast software and it's free, open source, good to use. Now, do, don't click download OBS right away because it says down here, all new development is now focused on OBS studio. And right now classic is selected. So obviously you want studio. I don't know why classic is still selected. And if you look at their source code on, on their GitHub page, uh, you can see that on the recent commit, the last update was made March 28th, which is like two months ago for me. And if we go to their current version of OBS or the current supported version or updated version, it's OBS studio. And if you go to their commits, their change history, the last update was made a day ago. So obviously we want to download studio, which is the one they're updating now. So go ahead and click on download OBS studio. And this downloads pretty fast. It's a pretty small file. 38.5 megabytes and I already have OBS downloaded. So this is probably going to break for me. Yeah, it's not going to work. So go ahead and run through the installation. I already have a download. I'm not going to do it. So once you install OBS studio, then on your desktop, it'll put a shortcut for you. But this shortcut is the 32 bit version. If you right click on it, click properties, they're using the x86 folder, which is a 32 bit applications. So no problem. They actually, actually download both versions. So right click on the application, click open file location. And then on the folder structure on top, the folder location, go back up to bin and go to 64 bit. And now here's 64 bit version of OBS. So if you have 32 bit version, obviously don't do this. If you have a 64 bit, a 64 bit machine, then right click on it and then click send to desktop. So now, the 64 bit version of OBS is download is on your desktop. So delete this one. Let this take over. Good. So now let's run OBS studio. Now I'm already using it right now to record my desktop. You can see I'm recording right now. And so I have to do something a little different. I'm opening OBS studio twice. So I have to do something a little different, but for you just open OBS studio. Now here's OBS studio and I want to start from scratch. So I'm just going to delete everything. And this is currently what you see when you run OBS studio. So the first thing you should do is change your settings. So go to settings and I'm just going to run through almost all of these tabs for the general tab, change the theme to dark because it's cooler. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to leave it like this just because it's a default. People will recognize it more and don't touch anything else for the stream. I'm going to start by streaming to Twitch. Then I'll start, then I'll go to YouTube. So change the service to Twitch and then select the server that's closest to you. And then it's going to ask for your stream key. So your stream key for Twitch is pretty easy to find. First thing you do is go to Twitch itself. Then make sure you're logged in, click on your name and go to uh, dashboard. Then on here, it says stream key, click on that show key. And then, uh, it's just letting you know, don't ever share it with people. And for this reason, I'm not going to show you my stream key. So I'm not going to exit out of this, but copy your stream key and then paste it onto here. Now I have it. I currently have it ready for me in another window. I'm just going to copy that, paste it there. Looks good. Click apply just uh, so it'll save your settings. So go to output and then change it from simple to advanced. The output mode to advanced, leave the audio track the same for your encoder. You probably have X264 selected by default, but if you see other encoders, then it, they're probably referencing your graphics cards encoder. So that's probably more optimized than X264. So like right now it says NVENC. I'm not sure what that is right now, but if I wanted to know, which actually I already know, uh, just Google search it NVENC and it says it's NVIDIA's uh, encoder. So. I have an NVIDIA graphics card. I want to pick that one. Obviously I want to use my graphic card that I paid for. Leave this checked and then go down here for uh, rate control. Leave it at CBR. 
And by the way, this, the following settings, we're getting it, we've done our research and we've, we're getting it from Twitch and YouTube itself. Like for example, CBR, uh, act, Twitch actually themselves said to put CBR here. So use CBR. And then their bit rate, they said use 3,500. So that's what I'm gonna pick here, put 3,500. Now, this also depends on your, uh, on the output that you wanna do and on your internet speed. So on Twitch's website, they said, if you wanna do 1080p, put it between 3,000 and 3,500. So how do you know what bitrate you want? Well, not only do you have to determine the resolution you want to stream, but you also have to see if your internet is fast enough to support this. So right now, this they said 3,500 is the maximum you can do, or you should do. So go to speedtest.net, run a speed test. And I've already ran it. And as you can see, my upload speed is 12 megabits per second. That's 12,000 bits per second. So 3,500, I can easily afford to do that, no problem. If your upload speed is low, like less than 3,500 or even close, then Twitch recommends that you do 80% of your upload speed. So just take uh, take this, multiply it by 1,000 and multiply it by 0.8. And then that is a bit rate you should use. Because you obviously you'll want to have some bit rate for all the applications on your computer. Keyframe interval, Twitch and YouTube both said to leave it at two. And then leave everything else the same. If you want to record as well, you can you can stream and record even at the same time. Then uh, go here. You can do this yourselves, um, but obviously you want to change the folder you want to leave it at, unless you like the videos folder at the default. It's fine. And for the recording format, put MP4. So then I'm going to go to audio and don't touch anything because they both said 44.1 kilohertz per second is good. Or YouTube said that. I'm not sure if Twitch said that. Go to video. And this is going to ask you what resolution do you want your input to be and what resolution do you want your output to be. So um, if you want to stream a good resolution, then obviously the output should be something common like 1080p or 720p. If you want to go lower than your uh, input resolution, then you have to choose a downscale factor uh, filter. Right now, since there's no downscaling going on for me, I don't care what this is, not going to use it. But if you are going to use it, then uh, how do you know which one of these to pick? Well, this is the algorithm they're going to use to downscale the video. And as you can see, Wikipedia has an article on this on image scaling. So pretty much like you start with a high resolution image or video, and then they downscale it to a lower resolution. And they're asking you what uh, algorithm do you want to put for this? So uh, the options OBS gives is uh, bicubic, bilinear, and land that thing. So this is by linear. It's okay. This is by cubic. It's also okay. And they don't put lands that, that one, but just pick whichever one you want. Um, maybe by linear looks better. I mean, it's, it's not much difference, so I don't really care what you pick, but try to be uh, consistent with your input. Hotkeys. You can mess with this. I don't use it at all. Advanced looks fine. So now we're ready to go. So press OK, and now the settings are there. So let's go ahead and launch a game. I'm going to launch Rocket League just because uh, I use it a lot, play it a lot. I use it on my last video, pretty easy to manage. So Rocket League started. So whatever game that you're launching right now, the first thing I would do, and I hope you do just to make it easier, is go to the options, click on video, and the video settings of whatever game you're running and change the window mode to borderless. You have the option to pick full screen or windowed, but borderless, what this allows us to do is if I alt tab right now to OBS, OBS is still up and running. And then if I was uh, streaming the game right now, it'll still be streaming. If I was on full screen mode, then if I alt tab to OBS, the game goes away. OBS stops. OBS like, like freezes the stream and it's not good but it is better it is better uh video settings i think for your game however go to borderless just for the sake of streaming and you probably won't even notice a difference then click apply or whatever game so that looks good so let's go ahead and get obs to read the game so to do this you need to add the video sources so under sources click the plus icon and put game capture type the name of your game rocket league Okay. And then if you're running the game at full screen mode, which we just took off, then you should see your game right away. Otherwise, if you're running it at uh, 
borderless mode, uncheck this and choose the window you want to stream. So obviously I want to stream Rocket League. So there's beautiful Rocket League coming up pretty nicely. Uh, don't touch anything else and press OK. So now Rocket League is here. You can also add other video sources. Like for example, if you want to add your video camera, you would click plus, put video capture device, type camera or whatever you want to call it. Camera's good. And then, uh, well, that's me right now. And um, which device your camera's at, this is good. Don't touch anything else, press OK. And then just put it at a nice position, maybe up here, a little smaller. So that looks good to me. Now, um, we're pretty much ready to live stream. So I'm going to press start live stream or start streaming. So to watch my live stream, I would normally go on here, click dashboard and click on live. But right now I'm running a game and I'm live streaming that game and I'm recording that game and it's running in the background. And now I'm trying to watch my live stream. My CPU is very high, but so I'm not going to watch the live stream right now. But trust me, I've tested this before and it works out great. So now I'm going to show you how to live stream to YouTube. And for YouTube, um, it's not that hard. So for YouTube, you would just go here and let me open up OBS, stop the streaming and click on settings. So go on to stream and change it to YouTube. And then the only thing you have to do is two things. Number one is change your stream key. And number two is to change your bit rate. So for your stream key is not that hard. Just go to youtube.com and then click on your name on top, right? Click on creator studio or your picture and click on live streaming. Yeah, so this page is your live stream admin home page, live control thingy. And here is your stream key here. You click on reveal and then I already have it copied on another window. So I'm just going to copy that copy and then I'm going to paste it into OBS. So I'll paste it here. So now it's going to stream to YouTube instead of Twitch and then go on to output and change your bit rate. Now YouTube accepts a crazy amount of bit rate because Twitch accepted uh, 3,500. YouTube said, if you want to stream 1080p at 60 frames per second, you can put it up to 9,000. So that's a lot. And you can even go up to 18,000. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to keep it at 9,000. So go here and put 9,000. And that's all you have to change from uh, Twitch live streaming settings. So press OK. So now OBS is ready to live stream to YouTube. Now, I've already tried this many times, but when I go and watch my live stream while I'm live streaming, while I'm recording and running a game at the same time, and I'm previewing my live stream and I'm previewing another one of the recording, my CPU goes too high and uh, I don't want to try that out. So, but I've already tested this out without recording and it seemed to work out great. The, the frames per second was good. The live stream came out smooth, uh, good quality as well. So that really is all there is to live streaming. So. Uh, I hope you have good live streaming sessions in the future. If you have any questions for me and Shane to, uh, to respond to, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, uh, thank you guys for watching and have a good night.